Hello nurses, this is Camp with Nursing Camp and this is Cardiac Camp and I'm continuing my assessment of the heart assessment and today I'm talking about blood pressure and what you need to know for the NCLEX and your tests. Alright, let's get into it. Well, blood pressure, as we talked about in a previous lecture, blood pressure is very important because blood pressure is all about the blood pressure. It sounds weird, but in NCLEX questions or any questions, when you have blood pressure in the question, it's there for a reason. It's called real estate. And when we're talking about hemodynamics and perfusion, two blood pressures in the question is always about perfusion. And whether you can recognize whether this is a normal reaction or an abnormal reaction, whether it's good or bad. And when we recognize those things, we're always asking about perfusion. And how do we figure out perfusion? Mean arterial pressure. In a previous lecture, I talked about mean arterial pressure, where I said, how do you figure that out? What does it need to be? Well, it needs to be 60 to 65. That means that they are perfusing their kidneys and their organs. And that's the BUN and creatinine covered in another lecture. And, but the interesting thing about this is, is that it needs to be 70 to 75 to perfuse the brain. And blood pressure helps with that perfusion. And that's why we measure the mean arterial pressure. How do we figure out mean arterial pressure? It's two times diastolic times, two times diastolic plus, sorry, plus systolic divided by three. And what I do is I think about that when, you know, how do I remember that? Two dice in a game. Um, two dice in a game. I'll draw them. Why not? And that's for the diastolic. Two times diastolic plus systolic divided by three. One, two, three items, three. It needs to be greater than 60 to 65. That means they're perfusing their kidneys and organs. If it's greater than 70 to 75, that means they're perfusing their brain. That's why mentation, decreased level of consciousness, is always a problem. But let's talk about blood pressure and the basics of blood pressure. So blood pressure is in question, always questions about perfusion. Um, so there's two types of things. You have systolic, right? So systolic. And then you have diastolic. Well, diastolic is on the bottom, right? D down, diastolic. Okay. And then systolic is on the top. Okay. Now, diastolic for dumping, D for dumping, right? So dumping into the vest, into the ventricles. Okay. So diastolic is when it dumps into the ventricles. Okay. While they are relaxed. Dumper. D U M P E relaxed. So dumps while they're relaxed. Um, that allows it to fill, and so that we can have Starling's law. If the valves are working, we'll have a good cardiac output because of Starling's law. Okay. Systolic. Okay, what's systolic? Oh, the halo. Halo. Go away. Systolic is the top number, and that's system. Okay, systolic is system, and that is the pressure it must exert the ventricle, the pressure it must exert outside into the system. The, the amount of pressure that the heart has to pump against. And that's why it's higher. Right? It requires more to get to the fingers and toes, uh, more pressure. Right? I'm not going to get into the basics numbers of you know, 100 to and stages and stuff. We're just talking about blood pressure and the basics behind it. Well, there's three factors that could affect blood pressure. And those three factors are the most important. Well, blood volume is one of them. So if you have a low blood volume, well, you're going to have a low blood pressure. Okay, So that will affect it. So that needs to be corrected. corrected. So either you're going to increase fluids or you need to address this. And what's the underlying cause? And we talked about this previously. It might be sepsis or it might be dehydration or whatever's going on. All right, another thing that would affect blood pressure 
is the pump. And what do I mean by pump? Well, the pump is this ventricle. This ventricle needs to be working. And we talked about this with ejection fraction previously, where ejection fraction needs to be greater than 60%. If it's less than 60%, you have no cardiac output. And why would it be less than 60%? Well, if this ventricle is damaged. So there's a problem with the pump. Okay, So if that pumping is not pumping, the blood pressure will start to decrease. And that's another reason. And then the last thing is the afterload. Okay, so afterload is, so you have the, the heart here, and the afterload is what it pumps out to the fingers and toes. Okay, after the heart. Preload is before preload. So if the afterload, there's a problem out here, like maybe it might be, are they vasodilated? Okay, why are they vasodilated? Maybe uh, um, nitrates, medications, sepsis, they're vasodilated. Well, that would decrease the volume, then decrease blood pressure, okay? Or it's not vasodilation. It's vasoconstriction. And vasoconstriction causes this normal volume, but now all of a sudden it's trying to, well, it didn't really squeeze it. It squeezes it. Well, that increases the blood pressure. So it's not always low. It might be increased. So peripheral vascular disease might cause that. Okay. So vessel tone is very important. So this vessel tone can also affect the blood pressure. So we also see the, the vessel tone. We use this a lot with what we call SVR, systemic vascular resistance. And we'll see that more with sepsis when we talk about that. And that's a natural process. SVR, when you have your fingers and toes, right? So you have your body here. Oh, he's got a little cleft foot, whatever. And um, you know, the heart. Well, these vessels, the vessels, this is SVR, systemic vascular resistance. Well, in response to decreased cardiac output, the vessels out here, they start to constrict because they're saying, hey, wait a second here. There's not enough cardiac output. So maybe we need to constrict increase in vascular tone. And so they constrict to force all the blood back to the heart and hopefully increase blood pressure. I cover this in sepsis. That's in another video. It's a little bit more advanced than that, but it's not important right now. The big principle is, is that systemic vascular resistance, the vessel tone, is an effect of blood pressure. Hey, hey. All right, I'm doing that. Um, okay. Last thing that we're going to talk about is mean arterial pressure. And that mean arterial pressure, as we talked about earlier, is all about perfusion. And that perfusion is when we look at blood pressures, we do the mean arterial pressure. So we should always be calculating it, and we should be looking at, are they truly perfusing or are they not? And when we look at uh, blood pressure types, there are different types. There's essential blood pressure, benign, malignant, and secondary. In the NCLEX, when we're looking at blood pressure, it's generally low blood pressure that you worry about. And low blood pressure because it is about perfusion or the kidneys. And you always worry about those things. Where hypertensive crisis and blood pressure, well, that's hydralazine. That is um, medication-driven. It's not the most likely uh, most likely is low blood pressure. My name is Nursing Camp, and this is Cardiac Camp, where I'm covering cardiac hemodynamics and vital signs. I'm on Pinterest, uh, Nursing Camp, uh, Facebook, and Instagram. Please follow me. Say hello, and we'll see you next time. Nurse on. These are my scribble notes, and see you next time.